To have passion in life is everything. What's your Everest? Oh, is it yeah. that 200 inch box? They just look so impressive when they're wide. Especially running away. <laughs> Welcome to this week's episode of Eastman's Elevated. It's like a think tank for outdoor activity. Sounds exactly like my hunting. Just always thinking about it, always trying to evolve it and make it better. Here's your host, Brian Barney. Hey, what's going on, guys? Oh, bang my coffee cup. It's not a good start, but uh, it's a great podcast. So uh, welcome to Eastman's Elevated. Today, my guest is Matt Payne. I met Matt a handful of years ago at a Western Hunting Summit, and uh, he's got this incredible story. Like, he went from uh, being sick and in the hospital, uh, being overweight, not being able to get off the couch and even walk out to the tree in the front yard. And he had this drive to to be this better person for his family and this dream of hunting out west. And um, he went from that to running a 5K every single day, getting himself in top physical shape, which also, you know, helps shape the mind and gives self-confidence. And um, uh, he, he's went from that to hunting out west uh, being in incredible shape. He's lost like over a hundred pounds. It's just this, this great story that I really draw inspiration from every time, you know, I hear him talk about it or tell about it. So, uh, really excited to have him on the podcast. Thanks so much for him to, um, take the time to be on the podcast and also just be so forthcoming with, um, information and, um, how he felt and how he made these changes, man, it's not easy to talk about. So, uh, really pumped to have him on. We'll get right into it. Just want to thank a couple sponsors. So I want to thank Forever Barnwood. Um, Forever Barnwood is this company. Uh, they're out of um, uh, the East Coast out there. And they they mill pine and they mill it to make it look like old barnwood. It's an incredible product. You can get circle sawn or you can get weathered. And it has this great gray brown finish. All the lots match. I used a ton of this in my house. I'm really proud of it. It's like one of a kind. I use their custom doors. I use their base and case trim, which everything is milled and everything's straight. If you've ever worked with old barnwood, it's horrible. It's cracked and knotted and twisted and tough to make look right, where this stuff all comes true and um, uh, straight. They also built box beams for my main living rooms. I don't know if you guys have seen that on social media, but... Uh, man, I did these gorgeous box beams with the tongue and groove ceiling above it, but they have all kinds of products. They have flooring and cabinets. I used a ton of it in my own house. I use it for clients' houses. It's just a great product. They'll ship anywhere. Uh, make sure to go check them out. They've got a killer website, uh, so you can check them out at Forever Barnwood. I also want to thank OnX. OnX has absolutely changed the way that I hunt uh, and scout and learn units. I spend so much time on this app. There's so many things you can do as well. And and the more I use it, the better I get at color coding my waypoints, really marking my waypoints so I know what they are. Uh, I found a random one this morning as I was looking, you know, back to uh, this place up in northwest Montana where I used to hunt mule deer and trying to figure out what my uh, points meant up there. But you can mark them. You can mark uh, tracks. So if you're moving through you know, a, a small bridge of public land that leads to bigger public land, like you can mark your track on that. It also helped me like in New Zealand where I was coming back through some sketchy cliffs and I had marked my track and that's the only way I made it back to camp that night. So a bunch of things you can do, uh, great satellite imagery, topography, you can save your maps, catch your maps. Uh, make sure to go check them out. They change the way that I hunt and scout, fish, and everything that I do. So thanks a bunch to Onyx Maps. I also want to thank Swagger Bipods. Uh, shooting a, a rifle accurately is all about your rest, and Swagger builds some great ones. They have shooting sticks if you don't like a bipod. Uh, they have bipods at all different lengths or heights, and then they also have a quick detach, so you don't have to carry the bipod all the time on your rifle. You can have it in your pack and put it on as you're getting close to crunch time or getting to make a shot. Uh, they're also spring tension loaded, so you can spread the feet as far as you want. You can push the rifle back into yourself, and you can also swivel. If that bull elk's walking, you can swivel on the bipod and track that animal to be able to shoot them instead of having to pick up your bipods and reset them. They're just great for finding a rock-solid rest, accurate shooting. They build great 
bipods and shooting sticks of all different heights. So make sure to go check them out over at Swagger. I also want to thank Black Ovis. Black Ovis is an internet retail shop that has absolutely everything you need for your next hunt. Um, you can put in the promo code ELEVATED10 and save 10% off your order. They carry all the top name brands as well as their own name brand. Um, they give great deals, knowledgeable staff, and then they also have a bunch of programs where you get points for purchases. One point equals one dollar that you can save off future purchases. Uh, if you're in the market for any new hunting gear, make sure to go check them out at Black Ovis. I also want to thank Camo Fire. Camo Fire is an app where they have 80 new hunting deals that come up every 24 hours. So you watch the app, uh, you see a new deal come up. Uh, they carry all the top name brands, and basically it's like overstock items or items they have extra on that want to move, and uh, they're able to give huge discounts on it. You're able to save money, get great gear. Works for everybody, so make sure to go check them out over at Camo Fire. Over at Eastman's, we have our mule deer course running. Uh, this is everything that I've learned about hunting mule deer in the last 25 years. This is start to finish in a video format in chapters, breaking it down, uh, how to travel and go find these hunts and go find these mule deer. So you can save 10% off your order if you put in the promo code BRIANMDC and um, get started and, and surely cut your learning curve by years. Uh, within a couple weeks of walking through this course. So I think it's an amazing asset for guys. You can also check out TagHub. TagHub is our internet research tool. Right now we're in tag application season, so I'm spending a lot of time on that. Uh, you can also save or you can get a free promo uh, a free year of Mountain Tough Fitness, which is a great program. So you can use the app. You get that for free when you purchase Tag Hub by putting in the promo code Brian. Um, yeah, I think I got everything in there. Make sure to check out our um, YouTube at Eastman's Hunting TV. And we have a, a new feature film I'm so excited about. Like, I'm not sure where this will be released at or when it will be released to YouTube, but we're doing this... Uh, video life of a bow hunter so we're compiling footage and getting ideas for it now and they're working on the editing i can't wait to see the first cut or the um, uh, promo for it and see this film come out i also have some other films that'll come out this year including you know a, a high country backpack hunt uh, for mule deer uh, we have an elk hunt here in uh, montana up in a, the extreme high country up there and just this gnarly elk country uh, where I'm chasing big six points, and then, um, let's see, what else did I, I swear there was another film put together last year, but maybe that's it, and then there was three films the year before that are still releasing as well, so you can check that out on our uh, Beyond the Grid, our internet TV show. You can also check us out on the Outdoor Channel. There's a couple new episodes on there as well on Eastman's Hunting TV. And, of course, the magazines, Eastman's Bow Hunting Journal, Eastman's Hunting Journal. So I just got done finishing a spring bear, like a spot and stock spring bear article uh, just wrote yesterday that'll be in the next Eastman's Bow Hunting Journal. So, uh, And I have a project for the next Eastman's Hunting Journal as well. So they do six issues of each magazine a year, 12 issues total. It's a great deal. Uh, good staff writers and then um, great subscriber stories. And um, they work really hard to make it a, a, a great magazine. So you can check that out. And um, man, with that, just getting these podcasts loaded up for you guys. I'll be down in Australia when these release. I'm super stoked for that. I'll talk a little bit about that. I'm going to jump on a solo podcast here uh, as soon as I get this one out to you guys. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit about spring bears, talk about um, just training and uh, uh, adventure putting in for these hunts. Uh, I have a couple couple things jotted down in my notes here so i'll hit record and we'll see where that one goes and uh release that to you guys as well and um man i'm sure i'm having a crazy good time down there i'm really excited i leave in a week so we've got to get my gear packed and work done and um get out of here go for a super adventure super stoked so uh thanks you guys let's get into this podcast matt Payne. uh did a great job on here eastman's elevated i'm your host brian barney here we go Hey, man. 
Yo, what's happening? What's up? Nice. Looks like you got a nice space there in your garage, huh? Yeah, I live in, uh, I guess you call it a barn dominium. Uh, before it was a thing. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> before it was popular, huh? Yeah, yeah. Been here a good bit, so. Yeah. I don't know how many years now. It's been a while. Yeah, oh, good for you. So it's like a house and a portion of that, and then part of it's like the garage shop? Yeah, it started as uh, just a shop, and uh, it's like 40 by, let's see, 40 by 80, and just uh, I cut ha- cut it in half, basically, and just built a house on the inside of it. Sweet, it like pl- 40 by 80, so like a... Uh, yeah, so now I've got a 40 by 40, so I've got like 1,600 on the floor, and I was able to get a little bit of loft, uh, loft space, too, Um Due to the height. If I was doing it originally, you know, I'd planned it a little different, but it worked out. <laughs> oh, dude, so, good for you. Yes. Well, um, so so much of this like housing is so tough for everybody out there to try to figure out. And it's like when mm-hmm. you can keep your outgo down and keep a lot of the money you make, and when you can own your own place like that, man, it just makes really good sense. So that sixteen hundred square feet, what do you have? Like a uh, kitchen, main room, and then three bedrooms, two bath. Yeah. Three bedroom, two bath. Yep. Well, I've got to finish the master bath. That never. I moved in too early. <laughs> <laughs> I never finished it, but uh, yeah. Taylor's on me pretty. Uh, she's on me pretty hard lately to do that. So, <laughs> dude, it's so tough, isn't it? It's like once you move in, you are done. Like you just need a, such a break mentally yeah. and physically, and it's like you can keep working till the end of time. But it's almost like when you get in, it's just like, man, I just need a couple weeks to collect myself, and then I'll get back after it. And two weeks turns into two months, and pretty soon you just get. Two used years, to seeing it in plus. there yeah and pretty soon it's yeah. like well i don't know i'm just fine with it i don't know if i'll ever finish it but yeah you'll have yeah. to get on it yeah she's uh if i didn't have the push i know it wouldn't get finished so she's pushing pretty hard now <laughs> yeah we gotta we gotta keep those wives happy i think like um you know I, yeah. i'd love to say how self-motivated i am but there's some other motivation as well you know it's like yeah uh, behind, behind, the, behind the scenes for sure right yeah just um you know she, she knows that I don't like requirements or don't, but, you know, you just get to know somebody over the years. So, like, I can feel her pressure, feel when she wants something done or something done in the house. And it's like, oh, this is important to her. Like, I better I better knock this out. You know, this will this will uh, go well on my side when I'm trying to be gone hunting. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, oh, I saw the uh, your story just a little bit ago. Uh, the shooting range looks awesome, man. Oh, the garage. Thanks so the much. Base. Yeah, it's yeah. the garage. Yep. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a three car garage and then it's one of the bays goes all the way back and I'm able to get twenty yards out of it and um man, it has been a work in, in progress. Like um you know, I just been so many days in there to try to organize my stuff, all the girls' stuff to all get it put away or find a home for it and then yeah. just been so excited to like have my bench set up and be able to work on my bows and man, I, I had to take like um yeah, it's just like condensing everything and finding a home for it and being like having the most organized garage I can. But it's just tough with so much stuff. Us as Americans, we just get so much stuff and it's it's mm-hmm. so difficult, but it all has value. And so it's like you can't throw it away because it's like, oh, that's valuable or, oh, I'll use yeah. that someday. But the, the way I started looking at it, too, is like there's a cost to moving it. 50 times or there's a a cost to storing it there's so like you have to look at that item and go man if i use that in the last couple years and just like purge stuff and get rid of it i think yeah that's that's my dad's rule i think it it used to be three and it's getting to be more like two or one if you've not used it in two years it just it needs to go yeah man yeah (laughs) you know with this random junk piling up you know it's not junk but like you said it just it's overwhelming, really. Oh, dude, I, I moved some boxes of junk that I just – I didn't go through in the last move or, you know, how you just start moving these boxes that just have stuff in them and then never dive into them because there's always something oh, yeah. more important. And it's – you know, it's too – it's like, but yeah, moving those boxes just killed me. So I was finally able to go through those. But, you know, it's too, like in life, like we all got to find this line of like uh, cleanliness, organization, and being happy. And so it's like you have to prioritize your health and things, and you have to prioritize having fun and family time. Like it can't just be 
being clean, but everybody draws their line with like their pickup truck, with their house, and like how much time you spend. And it is good. Like we also waste so much time. So I guess there is, you know, time in the day to to live clean. But you do have to draw the line. Like I got to draw the line in organi- organization, or I'd never go bow hunting. Like eventually, I just right. got to throw my stuff in the truck and go. You know? Yeah. Like as I tell her all the time, it's like we got to um, you know. You live in the house, it's got to look like it's lived in. So, I mean, because if everything's perfect, it's like nobody lives there. So, yeah, it's not a museum. That's it. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Especially when you have kids, too. It's like, um, kids, they just, uh, uh, you know, you're teaching them to pick up after themselves and pick up their messes, but it definitely doesn't come natural. And it seems like, uh, they leave little messes and art projects and things all yeah. over. So, uh, what you got planned, man? Oh. Well, um, if you if you don't mind, like I'd say we just get into it, and um, yeah, I'm with my my buddy uh, Matt Payne, and um, man, we met at the Western Hunting Summits, and um, man, it's uh, like you started you sending you started sending me some messages and supporting the podcast, but then we met at that Western Hunting Summit, and man, we got to have some mm-hmm. adventures together. You were in on the early days of the yeah. the Wild West, where there was no safety, like definitely. You know, uh, uh, I don't, I don't know that that OSHA was involved in those, but we went for it. Yeah, yeah, those were definitely fun. And the, and the thing is, is like so new to me, um, because I'm here in South Carolina. Yeah. So going west was just a dream for most of us, you know. So yeah, so you, um, you came out west. You had a hunt plan that year, and um, you kind of yeah. like took on or got hooked on. Like the yeah. Western hunting adventure, traveling from where you're at to a different state and trying to figure it out. And that's how you came across, like, uh, uh, you know, my information that I have out there, my content I have out there, and also where you came across the Western Summit. And then mm-hmm. we got to hang out. And, like, what's so impressive is just to watch your transformation, man. The the man you become from, like, those those summits, like, you – just found this passion in in western hunting in being healthy and being there for your family and you've been able to turn this in to this healthy lifestyle and this healthy way of thinking uh happy in life and living your passion so i mean that's that's like really why i wanted to get you on the podcast today just that's so difficult for all of us to find the motivation the consistency dedication like it takes years to build that right Oh yeah, yeah. I just, my story is a bit different than some. Like, um, we don't have to go into the whole thing. No, no, I'd love to hear it. Yeah. Well, just a quick backstory. Um, I've lost about uh, a little over a hundred pounds since uh, right before we met. Probably. Um, what kicked me in gear was I had a stent in the hospital for about. I think I was in there for six days this last time. I had pancreatitis extremely, extremely bad. Um, and this wasn't the first time. And the problem was uh, mainly due to lifestyle. I was, you know, overweight. I was on blood pressure medicine. I was just, I was a wreck in my early 30s. So it's like you shouldn't, shouldn't be in that shape. And I knew better. And I just snowball effect, worse and worse. And I also alcohol was a problem in my life that I let creep in and didn't, you know, I just didn't, um, didn't think it was an issue, you know, and Mm -hmm. until it was. So, um, and it was, it was for years and it just didn't, didn't do anything about it. And then I finally, when I was laying there, basically I could die, you know, I, I was in really bad shape and I made a, you know, I made a promise, uh, so everybody I'd let down. Taylor was there. We were just dating. Taylor, at the time. your wife, right? Yeah, yeah, yep. my wife Taylor, and um, we were just dating at the time. And I just saw the the disappointment in her and my my family, just knowing I'd let them down. I had and my daughter at the time. Um, she was a lot younger. She's uh, she's 15 now, but um, you know, she of course she probably didn't know everything back then, obviously. But um, I'm laying there and I'm like, I gotta be here for these all these people that rely on me that depend on me um and that i love and they love me and i just I, it was selfish of me to to live that lifestyle and uh i guess i finally had to have that big of a you know kick in the butt to to get going but um 
after that, you know, getting home, it was just a long, long road just to get healthy, not not just from the, the health condition that I was in from, you know, recovering from the pancreatitis. I was like super swollen. Like I couldn't even, it was hard to walk, like just to get up to go to the kitchen to get a drink or anything um, for like a week, uh, well, even longer, but almost like bedridden for the first few days. Um, so yeah, I had to have a plan. Uh, I could either lay there and, you know, just get worse. Um, and I was also dealing with starting to have, they, I, thankfully i had a little bit of medication but i'm not all about that to help me with the uh alcohol like cause you know little withdrawals the nightmares not tremors not sweats i was having all that on top of this other stuff dealing with it and it was just a lot to a lot to take on that first couple months and um but i never wavered i just said i'm, I'm gonna better myself i'm gonna this, you know, this hit me. I'm going to find out who I'm supposed to be. And, uh, man, you just, I've always hunted. So naturally while I'm, you know, can't do much else other than start walking a little bit at a time. Um, I'm just diving into, you know, more gear, more, more whitetail stuff. Cause that's what, I mean, I've, I don't remember not hunting hardly, you know, uh, just growing up didn't really fell in love with it though. After probably eighth, ninth grade, just when I really fell in love with it, and um, just your typical southeast whitetail stuff, you know. Um, but I lose my train of thought here. Start talking about deer. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> it's easy to that's do. That's what got me going. I started yeah. thinking about. Um, I wanted. I needed a lofty goal for one. Uh, something that, that was big enough that seemed kind of impossible, but something that would make me work my tail off. In other words, so started diving in and we always wanted to hunt out west um so i'd been to colorado one time um but it was more of a more of a sightseeing trip than anything because it was just everything was so big so vast we did a um over-the-counter rifle tag and i don't even know if we saw an elk that trip but it was awesome just because it was like it, pictures you know don't do it justice until you're in those mountains and get to see it for the first time but um so i was like i'm going back and I'm going to do something hard and see if I can do it. And so I started, of course, I got off on sheep for a little bit just because of the videos and all that, just watching some cool stuff. And I was like, that's not in my, in my pay range right now. <laughs> so let's dial it back. And, uh, that just turned me on to mule deer because of the country. And then once I started diving into mule deer, I'm like, I'm doing mule deer hunt. I was like, if I, if I get a tag and I've got, I got a, that's going to make me get in shape because you're not going to go if you're not not in the shape i was in i couldn't walk on flat ground to the refrigerator let alone climb thousands of feet but um so it started there and just started snowballing and i just became a sponge and you know it was just podcasts articles just anything i could find and of course um you came along um i was telling somebody the other day it's like i think like i don't think i've missed an episode since i started listening like every week because your guests are always so good. This reason it's I'm just blown away that I'm actually talking to you for the podcast right now. It's like you know, lineup's pretty strong, but um, and then I of course um, found Hillary and Ryan, mm -hmm. and you know those those guys just, just great people, right? Been so good to us, so good to us, and uh, and then like that was all at the same time. I like, found out you were a speaker. I was like heard about these summits and. As soon as they went on sale, I told Hillary this the other day. I was like, I was early in the, I was in the teens of my ticket number. I remember where I was eating lunch. Like I was logged on, like, like I'm going out this go time. And then once I signed up, I was like, oh, well, this is real. I'm going to Montana in six months. So I, you know, other than Colorado at one time, I'd never even been, you know, west of Kentucky, I think. So um, we load up and go to the summits and, you know, that's where we meet you, and it's just, uh, it's been a whirlwind, you know, the connections I've made and people I've met just by by putting myself out there, you know, and getting out of my comfort zone. Um, Man, it's, it's, I, it's, like, amazing to see the change. So, like, I just want to touch on, like, the beginning part of your story, like... um. Yeah, sorry, I jumped ahead a little no bit. No worries, <laughs> no worries. So, it's, like, um, it's... 
like we're always building habits, right? Whether they're good habits or whether they're bad habits. And it's, um, you know, it starts off slow. And so, like, I guess I just, like, uh, when you started slipping in to, to being out of shape or was it, was it the, the eating habits, the not exercising, and then the beers, like it's really easy to have a beer too and have fun, but then it starts becoming, you know, three, four beers to catch the same buzz. Then it starts yeah. coming every night. So just like talk yeah. about like how you got to that place. And then I just think it's amazing, dude. Like, um, family is number one through all our passions and everything we love to do. We have such a responsibility. And I love to hear you talk about it, about being there for your family, being there for your wife, providing for your family. Like, man, that's like it, it's wired into our DNA just like hunting is and the people we care about taking care of them. And I love that that is what changed it around for you, like sitting in that hospital bed thinking about your family. And um, dude, there is nothing worse than, than, than being in a hospital or pancreatitis that must be like a – uh, pancreas was shutting down, right? Something like that. Yeah, it, it's just it pretty much just um, it's it's telling it tells you in a really bad way that to to stop whatever you're doing um, and to let it. They said I have to like once you're diagnosed with it, I couldn't even have ice chips. Like I was on IV bags, but they wouldn't let me have anything like to eat, drink, like not even ice. And so because um, th- the digestion had to rest to let that pancreas not work for a few days. Um, just cause, and when it, everything else around it just doesn't function, you know, can. It's gotta be so uh, painful for yeah. your body to be shutting yeah. down too. And like trying to yeah. send you signs like you're, you're in rough shape at that point. That is where yeah. it, it hit at like a critical moment and to be in the hospital early thirties, like, uh, with your body shutting down, or at least that's what it feels like. It seems like you had to make a decision there one way or the other. Yeah. I woke up with a, um, you know, just a really sharp, um, just painful, like stomach ache mm-hmm. kind of, center chest kind of filled into your back top pain Mm -hmm. and i was ignoring it because it was uh i was going turkey hunting (laughs) so i met up with one of my best friends that uh, we turkey hunt together all the time and i just was dealing with it and i was like i ate too much um because i'm at this point i'm really out of shape and um i mean i act active but just not good food choices not and obviously way too much alcohol but um we double that morning. So it's like one of the best mornings I've ever had in the turkey woods as far as the hunt. Like he gets one like off the roost. Um, and then that was the first day I ever like used the fan and actually was like, you know, decoyed one. Like he tried to run me over before I got him shot. But and, so it's an awesome morning. But then as soon as that adrenaline like stopped, I was like, man, I just this, I kind of knew is that old familiar sting. And I was like, I, didn't want to acknowledge that it was because I knew that I was going to have to go to the ER. So about another, by the time we got the turkeys dressed and all, it was, I drove myself to the ER and sat there forever. And I told them my history. Finally, like they, they were about to send me home because they, they just thought I was there just complaining. And they finally looked at my history that I had had it before. They called my doctor and admitted me immediately after that. So, um, yeah, it's it's very painful. It's that my doctor told me he's like you you're gonna have to change your you know you're gonna not you won't see forty if you make it through this. You're you're still not gonna see forty um, the way you're living. And I was like, I promised him. I was like, I'm I promise this time I'm this is it. I'm changing it. And because I was miserable, like so miserable, just praying, just anything how tough is it like when you when you're in that state or when you treated your body like that and the only reason i'm talking about this is because your story of redemption what i've seen like over uh the last handful of years has been incredible but like like uh, how tough is it to get motivated to start or after you start slipping into bad shape or treating your body healthy it's just tough to turn it around right you built these bad habits and then it's like this monumental effort to get in shape is like such a far off goal it seems like you can never achieve Mm -hmm. it because it's months or years off right it's not it's not instant there's no 
there's no magic pill other than, you know, it's work. And I think that's what scares anybody or deters anybody. It stops them. Uh, cause I would get started and cause I was always kind of chubby growing up and I was the chubby kid, but, uh, athletic in high school, you know, all that, just a little bit overweight, nothing horrible. But then right after that, you know, the college years I blew up, got, got pretty big. And then I lost weight and did well with the youth you know that helped as well and got back down even smaller than high school size and then uh just life uh, just started slipping it's crazy how like well i'll skip today i won't go to the gym or i'll i'll go have a drink with the buddies or you know and then like you said it just it compounds over time and you turn around 10 years later and you're like whoa (laughs) i kind of made a few wrong turns there um and I would try to, when me and Taylor first met, um, I was getting back, I was getting in pretty good shape. I was working out again. Um, cause I've always had a passion for that. They just, it would get overtaken by, you know, worse habits and, um, which really can control you. And it's, it's just, it's horrible. Um, once, once I'm on the outside looking in, it's just, it's, it's kind of, it, it, I don't know what to say. I'm just, I'm ashamed of it, but mm-hmm. you know, it kind of, I wouldn't be who I am sitting here. I wouldn't be talking to you either if I hadn't went through all that. Totally. So it's, it's what's awesome too, that you giving me this platform to, if one person, you know, could just say, if this dude can do it, I can, then that's all it takes sometimes. And, uh, I'm actually helping a few of my friends have reached out to me lately, you know, just, just cause I've been more open to it, but, uh, cause I've been, a lot of people have been wanting me to tell you know my story somewhat for a while but i had to wait till i was ready because i'm still not like just the mental changes i've went through i mean the hormonal it's got hormonal changes i've had all kinds of crazy stuff just from i mean got that I testosterone like, I just pumping through you right what's that <laughs> got that testosterone just pumping through you now <laughs> well well that just the, just the, from being um you know so out of shape and then yeah. so sick in a way to the lifestyle I live now. Cause now if it's not good for my body, it doesn't go in my body. And you know, it just, uh, I get my body had to reprogram itself. Yeah. So I'm just now find, I'm kind of finding my groove just in this past year, as far as kind of my moods getting, because I, you can, I've probably been difficult to be around, but, uh, you know, I've, I had to go through a lot in my defense. Uh, yeah. and you know, I did it a lot, a lot, on my own i didn't do any rehab i didn't i went cold turkey I, you know and the diet is all i didn't have a coach i didn't have trainers uh, it's all well i've had help from outside sources because i looked for it you know mm-hmm. like finding you know just motivation like you for instance or just you know reach out to buddies or anything so yeah um that's one thing i think people don't do either is um they're scared to scared to ask like when you are, you feel like if you're even if you're just a little out of shape or, you know, just don't have a good body image or whatever. People just are, you know, they're they don't want other people to know that about them either. So they, you know, ask a buddy if to go to the gym with you or, you know, uh, it's tough, right? Someone. The yeah, the ego, I, you know, it's like the, yeah, ego, the ego keeps is, you from asking for help. It keeps you mm-hmm. from putting yourself out there. You're constantly thinking what other people are thinking of you. And this growth is beautiful. And you talking about it is beautiful, man. You're in such good shape. It's just amazing to see your transformation. And so that's like what I, what I want to get into is like, like finding that motivation or what is it that discipline day in day out. And don't think that you're the only one that's going through it. Like I think all of us have to go through it all of us have to grow up all of us have to mature find our discipline we all do things in our youth that we're not proud of actions we're not proud of um you know there there's um there's guilt there but there's also just like learning from it and getting better and so like i know what you're saying when you when you say like you're you're ashamed of it but that's the reason why you're at where you're at and the same thing is like you know, not a lot of my mistakes are public either, you know, but it's yeah. it's something that you have. 
have to share and share the growth. And I, you know, uh, you listen to the podcast. I mean, you know, you know, I share when I'm in a healthy headspace and I share when I'm yeah. in an unhealthy headspace and how I'm going to get out of it and, and my way of thinking. So you're not alone. Like life is difficult for everybody out there, but, but the beautiful thing is to like see that transformation. So you, you like changed your family, you came to this critical moment where you had to make a decision. You made that decision and you started being vocal about it. You told your doctor, you told your wife that you were going to get healthier. You were going to yeah. do what it takes. Um, but it's, then it comes down to the consistency, right? That motivation yeah. or that starts to wane two months or a month down the road. And, and you might, you're putting on strength and you're putting on muscle but you're probably not seeing the weight just fall off instantly all the time. You're plateauing. At times, you're gaining weight even though you have the right nutrition and you're working out and you're doing everything right, which can be these hurdles or these setbacks that can throw you back into your old habits. But instead, you kept making the difficult choice. You found something to drive you as well, like your love for this Western hunting, this passion for it, looking into it. Like you started to find this motivation there too. But talk about your headspace and like uh, uh, creating discipline, which you lacked for for a lot of those years. But creating that discipline, working out day in, day out, making the right decisions with food. And I, I'm sure you had setbacks all along the way, but just talk about your headspace there a little bit and making that decision well I, like i was saying where i was going with the uh, while i was in the hospital and talking about how bad the pain was um and it was bad enough i've not forgotten it still i told him i wouldn't because it's you know that at first that was a pretty big motivator and but then like i said it's like once i decided i needed a plan um i had to have a goal and Mule deer, hunting out west, that became the goal. So I got that ball rolling as far as logistics and things, but I had to get my body ready. So um, it was just, it's little by little. Uh, it is overwhelming if I look at all that I do now compared to then, but you can't, it's, it's just like, it's just like hunting out there. It's like I can't go to the top without starting at the bottom. So you just do, you, you just learn as you go. I started um, just at first just started cleaning, eating clean, like shopping outside of the grocery store, as I try to tell people now, because um, that's where the real food is, the whole food. If you make it yourself, then you're pretty good. So start there. And then I just start, you know, and that obviously and that and just being a little bit active, weight starts coming off pretty quick. But like you said, a lot of that's going to be water weight. It's quick. You know, it. it sheds off pretty quick and then you hit that wall and then you're still doing the same things and you're not seeing progress or like and or the scale goes up and you're like well and i'm working too hard for this not to be working so it, you, it's easy to slip at that point and i see a lot of people quit but i knew that's kind of how it worked and i was like i just got to get a little better every day you know just do something something a little different every day to be better as far as diet wise, do a little more exercise and just stick to the plan. And, you know, and that's what I did. And it just kept snowballing into just more weight loss, uh, just higher. Just my cardio is going up and up. I went from being able to walk. I, um, the first week I was able to walk after the uh, hospital. <laughs> I had a tree taken down outside the house and it was about 20 yards off the corner of the house. And I was like, I just got to get to that stump and I'm good. So I'd walk there and then I'd walk back to the door. So that got a little further, a little further. And we've got a pond here at home. That's a half a mile around it. So I started walking it and I'd make a, a lap. So I do a half a mile and then it turned into a mile and so on. And then it got to the point I'm like, all right, I'm going to start doing, I'm going to start running because I'm not good at it. I'm not built for it. It's hard. I've always hated it. That was my least favorite thing about anything in high school sports was the, like the conditioning part of it. So I'm like, that's, it's got to help you. <laughs> so, and I made myself when I started doing three miles or I, I, 5k, it's got to be 3.1. Can't be at three miles. It's got to be a 5k. Uh, I said every other day I'm going to do a 5K, no matter what. If I have to walk it, 
you know what I've got to get it in and like nobody's holding me accountable they don't care I, I mean they encourage you to not usually it's like no nah, you don't have to do that today but I would make it happen and it was you know I remember I, I, it hurts as bad now as it did then but I remember you know a mile then hurts like 10 now so um it was but I just kept getting you know better and better and then I was like I'm gonna start doing this every day just to see if i can because i feel like the body will take whatever you throw at it if you just it, it's if you got it up here you know it it'll do it so i there for a while i don't know how many days in a row i didn't even miss a day like i was just beating myself up but as mentally that that's what helped fix me was the the, the running um I think with the addictive personality and then I still, I say I hate running still, but like, I love what it does for me. Um, uh, and you're a runner. So you, you know all about the, how it makes you feel. So it's just, even sometimes during when you're about to die, it feels like you're going to die. Um, as soon as I'm done, like within that, after a minute, it's just, you feel so good. You're ready to go. You can conquer the day. It's just the hard part's over and nothing else getting in your way that day. It's just a, it's a different feeling. And, uh, you know, it's it, one addiction replaced another, but I think it's a lot more healthy addiction. <laughs> yeah, man, it's so powerful. Uh, so, and I, still, I don't do a, I don't throw down a lot of miles, but it's just if I can do that. I do a lot of three to five mile stuff. Mm-hmm. Lately, it's, Me too. Uh, it's about all I've been able to do lately. I've just... I won't rest enough. I'm hip and back's been bothering me in wintertime. I'm starting to feel a little better now that we got some longer days. It's we we got pollen already. That's my, my eyes. That's I probably look like red eyed and everything. I'm phew, pollen is nuts right now. <laughs> oh man, and it's hard. To, that's hard for you to imagine. There's snow on the ground, but man, <laughs> mosquitoes flying. I had to shut the shop door before I uh, got on here because there was mosquitoes flying around. Oh, man. Yeah, some of that warm weather would be nice, but I'll pass on the pollen. Well, um, dude, that is so powerful. It's um, like as you're talking, it just it just reminds me like, um, you know, not only are you adding physical strength and physical endurance and uh, your nutrition, uh, but you are like making your mind stronger to make yourself run that 5K every other day. And then every day, like it, yeah. the, the body will take what your mind gives it. And I like also what you said, like your body adapts to the stress you put on it. I mean, there you went from hardly being able to walk to the stump to making yourself mm-hmm. run every day and being able to recover from that and feel good the next day and feel uh, good as a human being. And it's almost like, um, you know, you can have help or you can have people that step into your life and you definitely like I find motivation I learn from other people I gain motivation from people you know like uh, just by listening to them or taking in their information but in the same breath you almost you have to make the decision for yourself like you have to make that decision and then hold yourself accountable like that's the only way it works because because like you say our loved ones they see us working so hard and they're like oh you should take a day off and it's like you don't know if i take one day off that that adds up yeah. into two into three into four like yeah. you know i've got to keep with it and i i also like how your decisions like you're faced with these decisions throughout the day and really you have to break it down to that like the hardest part about getting in shape is getting started deciding mm-hmm. you're going to get into shape come Committing to to eating the right food and to exercising, and we can procrastinate or put it off, and 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 so like getting started is tough, and then it's like every day you're gonna be faced with multiple decisions to choose the right thing or the wrong thing, and that goes for nutrition, for exercise, all the way through. Like in in all of us, every day are faced with decisions to do the right or wrong thing, and you just have to choose the right thing time and time again, and not let that. Uh, that instant gratification, that that instant food pleasure, you know, and we all yeah. like eating is tough, right? Because we all have to eat to survive. Like, um, mm-hmm. you know, so like, uh, uh, sure, if you're an alcoholic, you can quit drinking alcohol, but you can't stop eating food. But you just have to uh, eat the uh, the right portions, and you have to eat the right food, the real food that you're talking about. And that's what I try to t- stick to is 
I'm not I don't try to stick to a harsh diet. I just try to eat real food that's good for me, you know, just real fruits, real veggies, real meat, stay away from carbs, stay away from bread, but you know, it's not like I don't have a a dinner roll or a sandwich every now and again, but um it's just it seems like you just have to make those decisions every day and then tomorrow you got to start over and make the same right decisions, but you get better at it over time and it's still you know, even like you, it's difficult. Like, um, I used to sit at the trailhead for 10, 15 minutes after I drove 30 minutes to get there and go run a trail. And all of a sudden it starts raining or it's blowing hard or it's snowing crazy or it's super cold. And it's like, I, I don't feel like getting out of my warm truck and going for a run up there. But like you said, you learn like that that's going to make you feel better in the end. You learn that going home and not running would would make you feel worse, mm-hmm. like mentally. Like I, I, I'd be mad at myself. And so like pretty soon I'd make myself get my running shoes on and go. And now I've just learned like uh, – you know, I've strengthened myself mentally that I I make myself drive there, and as soon as I get there, it, I don't dilly dally along in the truck or waste time. It's just like get on my shoes and get started. I know the decision I'm going to make in the end, so I can either sit here and think about it and waste time, or I can get on that trail and get back to my family. But I I don't know, just some stuff I picked up on as you were talking, and you've made these huge changes because it's 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 not easy like there's um it's not easy in life and it's not easy to be fit and it does just take like that constant effort constantly making the right decision and and you've carried it to today you're still doing the same thing putting good stuff in your body getting your workouts in man it's um so good to see like a uh, a mentally, how much more of a positive person are you or how much how is this like making these changes affect like your decision making process or you know work ethic to provide for your family or how are some of these things carrying over to other parts of your life i think it spills over to everything the discipline um and it's it's really starting to catch on now like i said because i was i had to be so hyper focused to make such a drastic change in so many departments of of life um but now i'm starting to like I said, kind of find my groove and I'm, yeah, but it filters out into just everything. Um, just if it's a, you know, just simple chores that used to be like, oh, I'm just gonna, just gonna do that later or no, nah, I don't want to mess with that right now. It's just like, just it take five minutes to do it. Just it, that little extra discipline or, or just, uh, it, stuff isn't as hard as it used to seem. I don't think, <laughs> you know, it's like, once you've been through a few like some hard things it, it, a lot of stuff just isn't that big of a deal when you look you just sit back and look at it you know um i've changed my perspective on a lot of that stuff and and just as life in general um uh, i want to live life i mean i don't want to i don't want to spend it you know just working and wishing um for no amount of money uh, I am blessed. We've got a great business uh, going well right now. It's a family business, and now me and my brother, um, we do most of the work. Dad's still around for a lot of it, but he'll never he'll never stop. But um, we work hard, uh, you know. Leave leave in the leave in the dark, get home in the dark, and you know all about that being in construction because we we play in the dirt, so uh, we do the site prep and all that. We do a little bit of small commercial stuff. We do house sites and you know stuff like that and so we've always knew what working hard was but i just uh i just didn't control my my demons well enough to appreciate what i had so um everything's everything's doing better in life to kind of answer that question as far as the discipline factor um and just setting setting a goal um i knew i had to be disciplined like to to hunt you know, do these Western hunts because like I looked at it from the reality standpoint, you don't have to be, you know, in marathon shape or in perfect shape to do it, but the better shape you're in, the better time you're going to have because you're, if you're huffing and puffing, you're not going to be glassing or you're not going to be near as attentive. Uh, You're not going to get where you want to go for one. And then if you get an animal down, that's something a lot of people don't think about. You got to do something with it and you got to still, your body's got to be able to. Mm -hmm. So I just, I didn't take it lightly. I, that's, that's the reason I, I'm, I had to do something every day. And once I, if I didn't 
do a run, it was I did a hike. I, I did a lot of weighted hikes because I started that before I did that first summit because I was like, that's going to kick my butt. I'm not necessarily a flatlander, but we don't have the uh, we just don't have the elevation. I live at about a thousand feet, and we're out here at the base of the the Blue Ridge, so I do have some pretty. We got steep, gnarly terrain, like nasty stuff. I was uh, right here at the house, and uh, but we you know elevation is just a butt kicker. So, um, but man i just started just throwing in the work like like i said like if i needed to do a run and i didn't get up in time that morning if i slept in i get so i'm not a good person to be around i was just so pissed off because i didn't run like and it wasn't the fact that i knew i knew it's okay for my health my body it's probably do me some good to you know to lay off for a day or two but it was the mental i was i was the only one holding me accountable so I would just get mad at myself and like, and I wouldn't be happy with myself until I did that. So there was a lot of days during the, that one summer, I'll still do it. If occasionally I sit lunch and I walk the machine, I'd put my running shorts on, go run and, you know, dry off for a little bit, get back in the machine and go back to work. Yeah. There. People, uh, People think we're crazy, right? Running on the lunch break yeah. like that. Um, yeah. yeah, it's um, it it is. You just have to get it in, like you say. That once you start to build that discipline, um, like you you really don't have a choice in the matter. You don't give yourself a choice in the matter. You just make yourself do it day in day out. And I mm-hmm. think it, it starts affecting. Like you said, everything in life, like um, it puts life into perspective, what's really difficult and what's not. It, it gives you more self-confidence and like uh, uh, makes you be proud of who you are when you are disciplined. You do put in the work. You are trying to be a, a good human, trying to be, you know, and I think, too, it like helps improve my family life. Like um, I, mm-hmm. us as humans, we're meant to, to work hard or we're meant – for physical exertion and we're just better people when we wear ourselves out we sleep better at night um and and like you say it is um you know for me like with those girls getting older it's trying to connect with them and for so long or there are so many days that i can remember where i'm not present where i'm worried about stress at work i'm worried about uh, some problem I had or some coworker, or, you know, somebody that works for me or something like that. And I bring that problem home and I sit and I stew over it at night. And when I stew over it, then I'm not like engaged with my family. I'm not, you know, I may be sitting at the table having dinner, but I'm not interacting, laughing, having a good time. And so like, I noticed that in myself, like that was something I really had to work at. And it's, um, you know, it's something that I continue to work at is like just being present, like not letting a problem mm-hmm. bog me down, living in the present moment, really enjoying where I'm at and what I'm doing. And that's, you know, whether I'm I'm hunting or trail running or uh, working or, you know, whatever it is, life is such a gift. It's like trying to have this perspective of being present and just not taking my problems with me to other places. Like it doesn't do any good to stress over them. It's like, you think about them and kind of come up with a solution for it or your moves uh, forward. But after that, like dwelling on something isn't good. And so, you know, it's just like it, it's these things in life like we're working to uh, be happier, uh, be better at life. Like I don't think anybody starts off and just is like this amazing human being. You, like you have to learn how to be a good human being, you know, and our our parents give us like some guidelines and definitely like growing up you learn right and wrong. But you also like just have to make these decisions for yourself. And I know, you know, I've done so much growing up since the younger years or since being in high school like you – you just do. You get more. Again, it comes down to that decision making and making the right decisions. Um, but it, you know, it seems like life is a journey. It's like we're we never stop improving. Is hopefully the hopefully the deal. Yeah, yeah, that's the direction I'm headed. I hope so. Um, you definitely you are, man. Uh, you look great. Gosh dang it, I that discipline's it. getting you. Like um, those Western hunts, man. Um, how much better, how much improvement have you seen at those? Like an enjoyment being in the mountains. Like uh, now you oh, now you've got a handful of adventures under your yeah. belt. Oh man, it's it's been a blast. Um, I would say every year I've been has been hugely successful. I mean, still haven't 
put one on the ground. Um, I've, I've chased some deer and uh, elk, but um, I've been successful in the fact that I survived and I thrived. So um, the first year I went, I was like, it's going to make or break me. And when I got home, I said, it didn't break me. And, and, and so now it's 365 days a year. It's not just those 10 days, you know, <laughs> in the mountains. Um, it, that first year I was, I was more prepared. I, I was, I was pretty prepared. I, then I, you know, I surprised myself a little bit, but I did just enough, um, to, you know, I didn't overdo it. And, uh, thankfully I had some, some good buddies. I did, a uh, uh, drew a mule deer tag that first year uh, in Colorado and did black powder cause, uh, they could draw the tag. They live, they live out there. So, um, I was like, yeah, I was wanting to do, uh, archery, but, and looking at the draw odds, I was like, oh, well, I, I can probably make that happen. So, so we get the hunt, and that's the first year, you know, I go to the summit. So I'm taking in all this information, you know, this whole new world. And at the time, it's like there's just my just overload because uh, so many good speakers, you know, even the early years, it was just still just packed full of just good guys and just killers. And uh, that's – you think – you don't take away as much as you do. And then when I'm sitting there on the mountain, you're like, Oh, I remember him saying something about that. And you start, they start picking it up once you're there in it. So there was a lot of that happening. And we, we got on deer. Um, first day I actually got to go on like the first hunt day. I actually went on a stalk. I got a, got my first stalk in. I was within, uh, about 30 yards of him and he, I just could not find him when you're a thousand feet above them and uh, cause this, I think it was some deer we had bumped earlier in the day and we picked him back up. And, um, so I, I, I bombed off after him, but, um, from up top, you know, it looks a lot flatter than it is when you, when I crested over the ledge, he was on, it was just boulders like the size of my truck. And that's what he was bedded under. I couldn't see his antler tips or anything. And then like, I just doing that. And I guess he busted me and he was gone and I had the hammer back ready to, you know, blow the smoke, but, but man V and he was probably a, I want to say one sixty ish frame deer. Um, but to get that close first trip and I was like, I was hooked, man. It was God. And so, it, and then, uh, my buddy got a stalk the next day and something happened with the shot, but, and then I actually made another stalk. So, I mean, we, I was in on several just in that first trip. I learned so much. Um, and you know, one of the guys that was with us, he was, he was, uh, he's a good, he's a good hunter. Um, thankfully he, uh, he kind of mentored us into the area and took us into his, his sweet spot as he called it. So he was just glad to have, he said, I've hunted by myself so many years. I'm just glad to have some, some guys at camp with. So, and then, so the following year, um, he actually, he got a good buck. So I got to help pack that buck off the mountain, um, that second year. And then, after that buck, it just, just, we were in the same area again. And it just, as the year before, and it's just, I think a little more pressure. We didn't see it near the bucks. It was a little, little drier, I think too, but, um, what a, you know, what a hunt we had just, I was so glad to, to be there with him cause he, for one took us, you know, under his wing and took us in and then, uh, letting us hunt his spot kind of, and told us to, you know, gave us the stalks and all that to, to kind of just let us do it and then to see him get one was yeah, just that made it better for me just because you know he was giving and uh so generous to let us do that so i think he earned earned a buck yeah karma but, buck right for being such a, a good human being yeah good for him yeah and the same same thing happened to me the next week um it's because i bounced i, I kind of cut my mule deer uh well I went in solo for the first time after I went out with it. We packed his deer out and my, my buddy that was going to go back in with me, um, actually blew his knee out on the pack out cause he's had several surgeries already. And, um, he went down. So I was like, I had a uh, plan to meet a, another friend, a good friend from here. Um, he was, they, they go out to uh, Colorado every year as well. And I, and it was just a couple units over from where I was at mule deer hunting. He, they invited me to come to their elk camp that they go to every year. So that was the plan. And I was like, well, I got a couple of days. And I was like, I guess I can go in by myself. <laughs> and, 
And that's that's kind of overwhelming. You know, most people that I know, you know, can't even do one night without a cell phone. Let alone, I, you know, I think my camp was five miles from my truck in a wilderness unit. At, and I camped at almost 11,000 feet. And I was in there all alone. And I was like, I can do this, you know. And, man, it was, it was a crazy feeling for the first time, you know, because just never been in that world. But uh, talk about growth in just a short amount of time, <laughs> you know, go from uh, camping on the couch to to sleeping in the backcountry at 11,000 feet with uh, bear tracks all around the tent and definitely in mountain lion country. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, I slept like a baby that night, though. I remember thinking I was like, uh, I'm probably not going to be able to sleep because there was something right outside my t- – I was just under a tarp, too. I went floorless. I just did – I just dove head first. I was like, I'm not carrying a nest or anything. I'm going to go tarp only and sleep in the dirt. And I had, I, I'm pretty sure it was some deer, but they were right outside the tent right after right after dark. And, oh, man, I got, I got my pistol, and I was looking around. And I was like, well, I don't guess it wanted me. So after that, I just – looked at a book for a while and fell asleep and woke up and the next morning i was glassing mountain goats it's just incredible sitting there all by myself just i just think there was 13 goats and all kinds of does and small bucks around me and i was in i was in some deer i, I didn't see any uh anything you know worth chasing uh, worth packing out in other words but uh man what well, yeah, that was a really cool experience it's life-changing and you know, just to do that all on my own. And then went and met up with my buddy, had elk camp, and because uh, I was there with him, and it was just his brothers and his dad. And like, so I'm just part of the family, you know, with them at elk camp. And uh, just the stories, because we they we backpacked in, but we all kind of set up a base camp and camp near each other. And uh, just, just the laughs we had at camp, that's the memories, man, and being out there and being – in a bugle fest for the first time like there was one morning like they were quiet for most of the trip but there was one morning they were sounding off on both sides of me i knew my buddy was down down in one drainage and i I was like one of those bugles is probably him but that one's not him and that one's not him i don't know what to do (laughs) so uh, i just kind of enjoyed the the audio for a hour or so and I, I never did make anything happen but that was it's like jurassic park for a minute there <laughs> man. um so yeah his, so amazing right and i um i actually got a shot at a bull um early in the week uh well we'd been hunting we'd been hunting three to four days and uh it was getting hot so in the evenings we we had some water holes so i, I went inside a water hole and there was a tiny wallow at the in the upper end of it and um range that i just remember ranging that wallow and it was uh 18 yards and so i'm sitting there there's a mule deer uh and a little fawn came in fed around and my wind stayed they almost kind of it swirled just for a second because the thermals were starting to settle but you know it kind of had that little backdraft a little bit and uh she threw her head up and they just kind of and she she just eased on out and i could tell she calmed back down i was like these thermals have got to to start because i knew if the elk they were going to come from my left you know up, up this little drainage i was sitting in and sure enough i hear this clunk 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 and i'm i'm tucked in like there's there's other people have been hunting this but you know we're on public so like it's almost like a permanent ground blind was there but instead of being behind it i got in front of it because i'm like i, I can't raise up to shoot my how am i going to draw and raise and all that so i was like i'm better off just to sit here and let this blend in behind me because i remember what you guys saying don't get behind the brush because then you can't shoot you're better off with elk especially just stay still and let your camo do its work and whatever but um so I'm I'm sitting there and I'm like crisscross applesauce, <laughs> you know, sitting there with my legs crossed, like uh, elementary school. Because I, I remember I was like getting tired from sitting on the slope and I was just that's how I was sitting. And my bow's laying down and I see antler tips coming across, and I'm like, oh, that's a bull. I never like almost didn't expect to see a bull, uh, at least a legal bull, at, you know, at the water hole. I'm thinking it's not going to happen. And it's a it's 
actually a pretty decent bull. It was a little five by and uh, definitely, definitely big enough for me. Um, he comes down, he gets right to about to put his head in the water and he whips his head and like stares. I swear he stared through my soul because I could feel him. <laughs> it's like those red eyes, man. I, I'll never forget. It was like just piercing my soul. And uh, I was like, oh, God, please, just something. Please, please drop your head. I, I just, I, I was like, gigs up. It's over. And for some reason, there was something on the other side of him, a bird or something. He turned his head perfect. I mean, he's 18 yards broadside looking the other way. I draw back. I'm coming to anchor, and I just hear like that. I don't know if when my camera rolled over or if when the, the uh, you know, the flipper on my release came if it was just too a little tight and just the smallest click i mean you could listen to me draw my bow a thousand times and probably wouldn't hear it if i didn't tell you to listen for it but as soon as that clicked he never looked my way he just sidestepped and up like up a slope he went like just gone and so panic mode hits but he stops and gives me like the mule deer look back like the classic look back and he's facing the other way, but he's still broadside. So I settle. I'm like, I guess him. I'm like 40 and I, I was just shooting a two pin slider. So I was like, my second pin is pretty much like that 38, 39. So I'm like, I just bury it. Like I thought like mid mid body, but off that shoulder about six inches. You know, I remember like holding back. I remember, and but that happened quick. I probably, I probably punched it on that one, but I remember sending it and it hit, I seen it hit high and immediately I was, I, I didn't know what to think. For one, I just got a shot at an elk. I was kind of in shock. And, and another though, I was just had that gut sick when I saw where that arrow hit. And I was like, maybe, you know, maybe, I looked like I got good penetration and stuff, but I was like, man, that just looked, a little too high but maybe i'm good maybe it's just the way you know i was kind of shooting uphill at him uh off my butt anyways but uh so i give him you know go back to camp give him some time we go back and i find i had buried to the fletchings i found like the end of my era so i was like dang i got really good penetration or you know pretty decent buried to the fletchings and then a little further, I actually found where he kicked the rest of the shaft out, and I was shooting, um, uh, well, just a small fixed head at the time, and it it passed all the way through him, like, because he kicked it out the other side, and so, you know, no blood to go on. We finally found something just on a trail, and it was just that, you know, just thick, Man, just stuff the size of your arm, just brush that he just mowed over, and you couldn't see it on anything. And we, I went back the next day, and either high lung hit, or I heard you talking about like there's really no no man's land, but somewhere in that area, like that high lung, he just didn't bleed, you know, quick enough for me to find any. I'm sure, but that was a, it was a pretty good blow to the gut, uh. like. I was sick, but I mean, I was, I'm still so thankful. Just like created the opportunity. I got opportunity on a public land, really good bull, you know, over the counter. So I'm a small percentage, just, you know, to actually my first like real deal elk hunt too. So it was like, I'm pretty lucky, but to get that close and not seal the deal, I was, I'm still pretty sick about it. <laughs> oh, it's a heartbreaker, man. Um, it's I'm, a heartbreaker. I know, There's I know a, it happens. Those, then, um, those elk are just such tough animals, too. They just take such a precise, perfect shot to kill mm-hmm. them. And then sometimes you can just have that that arrow angle one way or the other. And, I mean, you know, they they can just go forever. And I've, I've seen, you know, I, I've seen bulls alive the next day or, you know, I've killed bulls with broadheads in them. And so I think a lot of them make it through there, you know, and it's... Like if they're gonna die, you you find the blood and you see that they're hurt and they bed down. When they're not, they can go forever. Like oh. that 
like that bowl, but um, hopefully made it. And like you say, yeah. so many things you did right, and to have that that thrilling just, close encounter, thousands of miles away from your house, yeah. like, and that's true adventure too. It's like, yeah. Um, yeah. man, it's, there's so much to like the journey, and I think like to be successful out west or anywhere. You know, it takes like working on all these skill sets, you know, to really improve your skill sets of the 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 shooting and, and and being able to be clutch in those moments, the the hunting, the theorizing, like so much that goes into it. But I, it's like a work in progress, and we're constantly getting better, and eventually we're to a point where then those animals just start to die consistently. And there's no doubt in my mind that you're going to see that with your trips out west and all the work and effort that you put into it. Uh, like that, that equals success, but it is like even – when you arrow something, it means the world, but the fun is really in the journey of the whole thing. It's it put you in it amazing is. shape. It's given you these amazing adventures and excitement and thrill. It's given you a reason to continue to work hard and push yourself. Um, like, I mean, you're uh, treating yourself like a professional athlete now just so you can hunt out west, just so you can have mm -hmm. enough for these mule deer and these elk hunts and 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 the benefit of it too is like we get to be healthy and um, be there for our families. And it, you know, having adventure and a passion like that, having these things that we truly love, you know, that's what drives us to be good people and drives us to be happy. So we're better to our families because of it, you know, and and we're healthier because of it. So, um, man, yeah, I th I think you've had a I think you've had a bunch of success, and I think you have a bunch of success coming your way, man. I'm I'm so proud of you the effort, the discipline that you put in. And, and I get motivation from hearing your story, man. And it's like tapping into that human experience. It's like, okay, how did he find the motivation? And even, you know, to be motivated, like to find the motivation to put in the work, like it's all one, it, it, that's one thing, but to continue to find it, to continue to drive yeah. forward, to not hit those plateaus or to not drop off. Like, I think that takes real effort. And I see guys as they get older uh, give up hunting or give up the adventure of hunting. And I, I just, um, you know, that definitely won't be me. I'm going to be pushing hard to the end. And that definitely won't be you either. There's, there's like beauty in the challenge and beauty in finding something that you truly love and are passionate about, you know. And, and once you do, like – continuing to have motivation like i i'm continuing to find it now like i want to take myself and my body and my mind to another level i want to push harder than i've ever pushed like that that is continually my goal and, and now you know always i've enjoyed the journey so much that i just can't wait for like the adventure of this season and i know i'm gonna face hardships i know i'm gonna face challenges and it's going to be beautiful. I'm going to be sleeping in the dirt somewhere, challenging myself to my core. And, and I just think it's such a gift that, that we found that. And I can't imagine, like, not having that passion in my life or taking that away. Um, you know, I'm sure I'd have to f have something. It'd be rock climbing or it'd be, you know, I'd, I'd like to hope that I'd find something. But I just don't know what I'd do if I didn't have that passion for, like, the outdoors and the hunting space. It truly makes me happy. Oh yeah, man. That's, that's me. I just, um, it, it just, it takes over everything. It just, um, I love it. Yeah. You know, it's like you said, it's like, I, I feel lucky now that I've got that though. Cause it's like, you just love something so much that that's just all you think about. You just go to sleep thinking about it. If I dream, it's, I'm dreaming about it. <laughs> you know, it's, it's just, and then like you said, I, the journey, um, really is the the cool part at first of course it's just like i don't want the journey i just want i just want to get there i mean it's, i just want a big buck it's, it's, it's harder it's harder when you're at the at the bottom yeah. and you hear the guy saying it's all about the journey but like once you once you get on your journey it's uh it is it's pretty good ride um because I, I look at how much i've i've changed and you know learned in just just a handful of years, I, you know, I can't imagine, you know, 10 years from now. And that's the reason to stay disciplined with the fitness because we're not getting younger mm -hmm. and it's not going to get easier and probably going to be a few more people out doing it, you know, by then. So you're going to have to work even harder. So we got to be in shape to do it. So it, it's just, man, I, you got to want it with just everything 
in you and just go get it. And just every day I wake up and just I, I kick my own butt. And like you said, sometimes I remember a couple of days ago, I, I got out of the truck and it's like stood there and I was like, I could, I could, my legs kind of need a day off today. Uh, I could just go hit a quick lift. And I was like, I knew what I was going to do. <laughs> so I, I could have been halfway through my run. <laughs> I'd have been a mile down the road, you know, but, uh, I did it anyways. And then, so the next day it's just like, you go straight into it. You, you know, you will, that's me getting off track. That's about as far off track as I'll get. And I'm not trying to toot a horn or anything. It's just like, I've been so hard on myself and so disciplined, but now I'm starting to be able to enjoy putting in all that work and like now i got my fitness it's not dialed i've still got a long way to go i've got more goals to to accomplish there too but um like with the big trips and the adventures like now it i can focus on other things because at first it was like the fitness like i said it had to be so hyper focused because if you're not able to carry a pack then how are you going to do anything else let alone scout or glass or anything so and now I'm starting to, to break it down and work on, you know, other things as far as because I've been able to find deer every year um, and getting better at it. Uh, elk hunting hopefully is getting better. This year we got, man, I went with Tyler. Remember Tyler from the uh, um, summits? Yeah. We, uh, oh, yeah. Tyler. From Colorado. Yeah. 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 We hooked up. Uh, He's uh, a great guy. Behind. Yeah, him and Ryan um, invited me to join them. So uh, this year, uh, I went out there uh, and hunted four or five days with those guys, and uh, we got we got on some elk. Um, Tyler was on it with the e scout, and he's been paying attention in class. So he uh, he he's put a, us he's on. A good we, we got, yeah, we got close. Um, uh, dude, we were we were within eighty yards of a what we would say a giant public land bull he was it was a good bull and just it was so windy uh, there was no shot or anything uh at that point but anyway like we just lost track of him but man we like i said we got on him and got close it was just and we were in some rough country but we you know learning every time we're learning and it's just can't wait to get back i'm i'm ready to get out there right now i bet man um we're uh yeah speaking of tyler thinking about doing antelope for the first time this year depending on the tag situation uh on other hunts if i draw or not but um it's pretty good when the wife wants to do that for anniversary trip she wants to go chase antelope with a bow <laughs> yeah it's really cool yeah good so, for you yeah. well, i want to argue with her uh for that <laughs> yeah no doubt yeah that's yeah. beautiful man well yeah you've got your whole family on it too everybody's getting healthier like uh yep. you start a change with everybody which is beautiful and i'm sure you know just like you mentioned in the podcast your your friends as well and it's um uh it's it's uh, uh addictive or you know people gravitate towards you when they do see that change and see what you brought on and see your happiness they start asking for advice or you're like how how'd you do that the same way i asked you like like mentally just trying to get in the same space that you were in to make that change because i think a lot of times that's the um the toughest challenge right is like uh just getting your mind right and getting that discipline and that action started and just get going on those positive uh, uh behaviors and it snowballs like you say at first it was walking to the stump next you were walking a half mile and pretty soon you're running a 5k every day pretty soon you're hunting the most gnarly places in the lower 48 going for adventures and you've you've just done all this change to yourself you know like uh uh through uh your mental determination and making your body do it man i'm i'm um well i'm so impressed by you man um I'm so happy to call you a friend, and um, I can't wait to to see what this year brings to you and the the years in the future, man. I know it's I know you're gonna have some big critters hit the deck, so you just keep after it, man. And um, thanks so much, man. Appreciate you. Well, I, pre- I appreciate it, man. It's too kind, but and I just appreciate the chance to talk to you. I probably sound like an idiot, but uh, Me all too. over the place. <laughs> but, all over the place, but man, it's it's been a blast, yeah. and uh, I can't wait to hang out with you this summer. Oh yeah, yeah. We're gonna go okay, have I'll, some adventures I'll, for sure. Be out for about two weeks this uh, this year, so. Yeah, you're coming to two summits. Um, yeah, it yeah. sounds like we're in a new location. I don't know how much I'm supposed to talk about yet, but um, should be fun. I'm really excited for it. And Ryan always knows how to challenge 
uh, on the hikes, on the shoots. Uh, he he puts together a really good event, and I'm just um, – yeah, I'm happy to be part of it for sure. So, yeah, he gave me a call the other day and kind of filled me in on some details and some dates. So, uh, yeah, man, I'm super excited. It's going to be fun. Yeah, if we can keep him from making uh, that double shot we had to take in the hurricane. Remember when the, the, <laughs> it was raining so hard? And we just listened to Joel Turner tell us to not punch the trigger, and we have to get two shots off within like 10 seconds, and we're in a downpour of rain, and we're all just rattlesnaking it. So <laughs> uh, uh, that was a fun day, though. Uh, super fun. So, yeah. But, yeah, man, sure. I appreciate everything, uh, and keep it up because you're a big motivator for me just, uh, every day, man. Yep, you keep it up as well, and um, keep in touch. Give me a shout anytime. I appreciate it, man. All right, Have a thanks. good night. You too. All right, guys. It's a wrap. Thanks to Matt Payne. What an inspirational story, man. What uh, what a story of discipline and dedication. And it, it isn't always the, the, the front leaders that are displaying these traits. Like sometimes it can just be an average guy that decides he wants to be above average and wants to be there for his family and wants to hunt out west and wants to enjoy life to the fullest, set his mind to it, get himself in great shape. And um, uh, now he's really enjoying the... the um, the fruits of his labor. So super cool story. Thanks again, Matt, for coming on and, and being so open with information. I know that isn't easy. And, um, man, I really think it's beneficial for our audience. So uh, thank you guys for listening in. Thanks to our sponsors. Uh, Want to thank uh, Forever Barnwood. Again, just amazing products. Uh, really help make my house one of a kind. It's a great Western look, but it's a good look for anywhere. Uh, incredible stuff. So check those guys out. Um, make sure to go check out uh, Onyx Maps. Change the way that I that I hunt and scout. Man, I just love this app. I spend a ton of time on it, and um, I'm always learning new stuff with it as well. It's like the more you use it, just the the better I get, and it's so intuitive. Like it really helps me uh, learn different units, and uh, really plays an integral part to my success out in the mountains. Also want to thank Swagger Bipods, building great shooting sticks, great bipods, uh, quick disconnect, uh, spring tension loaded so you can swivel at your target. Like shooting a rifle accurately is all about the rest, and Swagger builds some great ones. So go check those guys out. Thanks to Eastman's and everything they do. Uh, again, that Mule Deer course, uh, promo code uh, BRIANMDC, uh, Eastman's Tag Hub, promo, coast, promo code BRIAN. Uh, also, uh, Black Ovis, promo code uh, ELEVATED10. So, um, yeah, save you guys some, some money on your orders there, and uh, thanks to the, all those guys and their support. Man, with that, um, yeah, just getting my gear ready. Like I say, when this comes out or you guys are listening to this, I'll be in Australia. I'm just so pumped to go hang out. Two good buddies and... Um, it's just going to be so fun to match wits with like roaring red deer. Like I've already got sent a few videos as they're starting to rut and just this incredible animal and those, those free range red deer. I mean, they pretty much look like a five point bowl and then, um, have crown points and, um, just, uh, incredible bodies and horns on them and so unique and so close to elk. That's why I'm so pumped to hunt them. And then, man, I just love fallow deer. I have, um, one that I hunted in New Zealand in this incredible spot. And so I'm really stoked to go chase some fallow around sandbar, which are supposed to be super challenging. And so, uh, man, I'm just embracing the adventure. So, uh, I really need to start getting my stuff together. I got about a week left, so, um, it's on my list today. So finish up these podcasts and then we'll get working on that. But super stoked, man. Um, going to be such a great adventure and then bears when I get back. So some fun stuff coming up. Uh, I say winter's loosening her grip, or I was going to say that, but I got about a foot of snow outside right now. It looks like winter, so uh, she hasn't loosened her grip yet, but she will. Uh, seasons are changing for sure. So, um, With that, thanks, you guys, for all the continued support. I really appreciate you. We'll record that solo podcast, get that out to you guys, and then, um, yeah, we'll get some podcasts out when I return. So um, be well. Keep working hard towards your dreams, man. Um like a a lot of opportunity out there to make a better lives for ourselves and our families and also like enjoy what we love to do this adventure and this passion of bow hunting so keep after it guys talk to you soon